Oh, I didn't see you come in. Hey there, Rust in here. <sighs> Oh, I need a coaster. Yeah, that'll do. They're not seeing much use. Since you're here, I can assume you had a question about Wanderer. What is Wanderer, you ask? Wanderer is the eternal format for Force of Will, but not every card in the game is legal for it. Before we go into what is legal in the Wanderer format, let's quickly go over what isn't, and let's set the mood first. Like most Eternal formats, Wanderer has a ban list for cards that cannot be used in any deck. Wanderer also has what's known as a combination ban list. The combination ban list is a list of cards that cannot be played together in the same deck, but are legal to be played in separate decks. So let's say that you want to play one card, and it's combination banned with another, those cards cannot be in the deck list whatsoever. They cannot be in the side deck, and one in the main deck, or one in the stone deck. They cannot be played in the same deck list. But, if you want to, like, run one card in a deck, and the other card in another deck, that's completely fine. They just cannot be played together. I'll have a link for the list in the description, but you can also join one of the major forcible discords to find out when the list is updated. We also have demo decks. Which, while the card quality of the demo decks have improved over the years, none of these cards are legal for play. Force of Will also has one cluster, or block to use a different term, that is not legal in Wanderer. That cluster is called Valhalla. In the community, we tend to call it OG Valhalla or Original Valhalla, and that nickname will make sense here soon. OG Valhalla had booster boxes and star decks, and a mechanic that is not supported in Wanderer. Just to uh, quickly go over these here, uh, this is the Dawn of Valhalla booster box. I'm just gonna tell you this right now, this, like, Valhalla stuff and the demo decks, if you're just looking to play, I wouldn't drop money on it at all. These are really just, like, for collectors at this point. I have even, like, bought, like, new ones here. These are just empty boxes, but I'll go over them real quick for you guys. So, for the OG Valhalla star decks, for light, we have the Knights of the Round Table. For the Fire Star deck, we have Wolves of Raging Flames. For the Water Star deck, we have Royal Palace of Raging Seas. For the Wind Star deck, we have Magic Circle of the Hurricane. For the Darkness Star deck, we have Jet Black Phantom. So this and the demo decks, really only collectors will be interested in buying this. I don't see them ever bringing back the break mechanic into Wanderer. Yeah, this is really just like a collector's item at this point. I wouldn't drop your money there. I would put it more towards getting like newer sets or staples if you're looking to invest money into Force of Will. As for which products are legal in Wanderer, well that's why I'm here to show you now. The first cluster for Wanderer is called Grim Cluster and everything from Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale and onwards is legal. The next part of the video is mostly to show off some of my seal collection. The release order on some of these will not be exact, but I'll do my best to keep them somewhat in line. So like I said, the first cluster is Grim Cluster, and the first booster box for Wanderer is Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale. Really nostalgic. This was the first booster box I ever opened, and uh, yeah, I'm happy that uh, I did. It was a great start, like, yes, I did start with the OG Valhalla Star decks, but yeah, that, that was kind of a pain to get my hands on. This was, I got this before this was even, like, available for purchase in my LGS. This wasn't even in my LGS, I bought this off of Amazon, like, yeah. Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale, fun. Fun classic set. Love it. The second booster box for Grim Cluster is the Castle of Heaven and the Two Towers. Me and my friends, we always just called it Two Towers. You know, short name or TAT, you know, the abbreviations. This was a really interesting one for me. So this was actually the set where I realized that I had bought enough products to just have a play set. There's a moment where like I was cracking packs and I was like, oh, well, I'm getting a lot of repeats. I'm like, Wait, do I have everything in the set? And then, like, I looked and I was like, I 
have an unopened booster box for this. And I just was like, I think I'll just keep it unopened and like, you know, do like draft or something or like sealed gameplay like in the future or something, you know, have it like a fine wine down the road. And uh, that kind of like kickstarted the whole like, oh, I should save some of these boxes because one of these days I might, you know, want like a sealed collection for this game because I, I like hardcore got into this game and I was like, I'm legitimately enjoying this. I, I want to keep playing it. And uh, yeah, this was, uh, it was this. And then like shortly after I bought two more boxes of uh, Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale, And then I bought another box of this and I have more boxes of these back here in the pile. But uh, yeah, it was definitely the Castle of Heaven and the Two Towers that uh, kind of kickstarted my whole like, I, I want to have sealed boxes for this game. The third set for Grim Cluster is the Moon Priestess Returns. This was actually the uh, booster box that uh, my friend who like got in the game with me, uh, this was the first booster box that he got. He just uh, opened it up and uh, just got like some pretty good pulls, was able to make a uh, Grimia deck and uh, kind of wrecked the uh, Valhalla Star decks, not gonna lie. I managed to squeak out a game with the Darkness deck, and that was actually like my first win against a like, you know, Grim Cluster deck, I guess you could say, was actually with Astema. And, you know, kind of like started like kickstart a little bit of a waifu status there, not gonna lie. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, it, it was a fun time, yeah. Then the, the infamous fourth set for Grim Cluster. <sighs> Millennia of Ages, MOA. Yeah, um, I, uh, I, say what you want about it. Yeah, it did kind of like, you know, rub some people the wrong way. I, I say some people, a majority of people the wrong way. It's still a great set. If you're a new player, if you're thinking about picking this up, maybe just look at what staples are in this set. Uh, there's some Cthulhu that are pretty good. And that's about it. <laughs> you can make some arguments for some other cards in the set that are, you know, pretty decent, but like, aside from the Cthulhu in here, it's not much going on. Still a, a cute set, and you know, back in the day, had some fun stuff. Could've gone better. Then uh, we also had uh, our first uh, side set, which is uh, Vingolf, Engage Knights. This uh, was a great way to get the dual stones that you might have missed out uh, from the uh, previous boxes. And then also Vlad was kind of an OP ruler, not gonna lie. Uh, I uh, definitely uh, felt the wrath of Vlad. Yeah, uh, the Grim Cluster is just super nostalgic for me and uh, I'm not gonna linger on every single cluster like this and every single booster box but like this was a very nice way to get into a new game and even with the bad history that MOA has I was still happy to crack packs for it and fill out a uh, play set for it. Now it's, uh, it's a lot of nostalgia here but uh, let's get going on to the uh, next cluster. Alright <laughs> this is gonna be a bit to move but we have Alice cluster. Alright A lot of dust. Not gonna go into too much of a nostalgia trip here, but uh, I definitely have fond memories of the Faria versus Melgus uh, star decks or dual decks, whatever you want to call it. Faria the Sacred Queen and Melgus the Flame King. And uh, yeah, just assume for a majority of these products I have multiple of. I think you can actually see back there in the corner here. Can I touch it? Yeah, there, there's uh, there's four more unopened, so yeah. So we had that. So the first booster box was the Seven Kings of the Lands. In the releasing uh, right next to it, we also had five new star decks. We had uh, the Arla star deck, the Light deck, Arla the Winged Lord. Uh, great little deck if you like angels. The Machina deck, which is also a fire deck because he's void, so you can just kind of like throw, you know, whatever in there. Here's another fan favorite for a lot of people. We have Valentina, the Princess of Love, her star deck. Then we have uh, Prissia, Beast Lady, another, you know, waifu character for a lot of people. And then lastly, we have Rizard, the Undead Lord. These star decks, they were definitely a good way to get like the, uh, you know, Regalia and like just 
just the support cards for the rulers. The only like bummer of that was is that you could get all their cards in the booster boxes. There wasn't any like star deck exclusives in here, but it was like a nice cheap way to buy into the game. Uh, none of the cards in here are foil. So yeah, Seven Kings of the Land. A uh, very beautiful box, classic. Like I said, uh, you can get all their support stuff in here, so it's weird. Star decks are weird, like, you kind of want to, like, have them be nice and powerful and have all the package and stuff, but then, like, if you can get all that in a booster box, it's like, why would you buy a star deck? I don't know. It, it's weird. These were good, though. I just remember even at the time that this was releasing, it was like, well, if you're gonna buy the booster box, you're probably gonna get a playset of what's in here. Here, so yeah, it's weird. It's weird. The introduction of another waifu. The Twilight Wanderer is the second set for Alice Cluster. Introduced uh, Dark Alice. Um, <laughs> a lot of people have that as a fan favorite, I know. Then we have the Moonlit Savior, which is an introduction of Gil Lapis, another fan favorite. And then we have a uh, Battle for Autoroctia. There's a sticker on here. Yeah, I tried to like alcohol wipe it off and yeah not not much like I'll, I'll give it another shot down the road but yeah this one was pretty awesome not gonna lie it had you know some very goofy stuff in it like croco sharks it also had the uh, memoria rulers which were like really interesting they had done rulers that could you know go into like a different j ruler like with pandora back in uh, crimson moon's fairy tale but this one had like i think it was five once again i'm not gonna linger on this too long it's just grim cluster and alice cluster were like very nostalgic for me our second side set is Vingolf 2 Valkyrie Chronicles. This one's not as nice to get as the Engaged Knights as far as like somewhat playable cards. You do get more of the dual stones which is nice. It's also usually cheaper than Engaged Knights so if you're like desperate for dual stones it's not the worst thing to pick up but your money could probably go elsewhere. There are new dual stones out now so yeah. Still Great sets. Owl's Cluster it was a fun time. Up next is a cluster that I know a lot of people love, and you know, I'll include myself in there as well. Lapis Cluster had probably some of the best star decks, in my opinion, as far as what you got for it. So, one, you got your star deck. Two, you got two dice, which are really cool, they're official dice. And then three, you got three booster packs. Yeah, the, the dice have kind of fallen, you can... You can hear them jiggling in there, yeah. For our light deck, we have a fairy tale force with a million. Then we have our fire deck, which is Rage of Relay with uh, you know the Hotep and Lunia. Our water deck is uh, Mercurius with uh, Malefic Ice. Oh, you can kind of see the dice a little better in this one, yeah. For the Windstar deck, we have Feasting, Swarming Elves, very uh, classic one. And then lastly, for the Darkness Star deck, we have Makage, Vampire, Hunger. Very cool, very cool star decks. I absolutely love these. Whenever it comes to actually like teaching someone how to play Force of Will, these star decks are honestly the best. If I Spy ever like reprinted any star decks, I'd want these to be reprinted because they are like bare bones Force of Will, but there's still like mechanics in these and there's like upgrade paths because you have the booster packs already like included the official dice it's really hard to top this like these are really good in my opinion those are the lapis star decks the first set for lapis cluster is curse of the frozen casket this is worth picking up just for the playability of it in a limited format booster box versus booster box is a fun time doing sealed doing a draft. These are great. These have uh, reprints of the dual stones and different artwork. You can also get textured cards, so you can get textured dual stones. Very cool. This is some good nostalgia too. I'm gonna stop lingering on every single product. We have a lot to go through. The second set for Lapis Cluster is a Legacy Lost. The third set is Return of the Dragon Emperor. And a uh, fourth set is Echoes of the New World. All right. You thought I wasn't gonna, thought I wasn't gonna say it, did you? Oh yeah. We have the third side set, Vingolf Three, Ruler All Stars. This uh, 
This is expensive. I'm just gonna say it right now. This is expensive to get sealed. I'm very fortunate that I have this sealed. I'm not gonna linger on anything much longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up next is Rhea Cluster. Got, uh, what is this, six star decks? Uh, what? This one actually came out uh, later than these, but I'll go ahead and lump it all together. So, first off, we got our pandas with Tigris with King of the Mountain for the light deck. For the fire deck, we have Kirik, Blood of Dragons. Cool star deck. Fan favorites, uh, we have uh, Shayla for the water star deck, Below the Waves. Then we have Gil with the wind star deck, Elemental Surge. And then we have very much a uh, fan favorite waifu. We have Rhea with the darkness star deck, Children of the Night. So those are the five star decks. These were weird. So basically, these came out and they were kind of like nerfed forms of the rulers that would come out later I guess you could say. It was like the rulers got DLC. Basically all these rulers have what's called a sealed item and no one like knew what it did until it was released that hey this is what the sealed item is and then like retroactively all these rulers just now have like another ability that you have to like have it written down or like printed off as far as like what it actually does. Kind of goofy like when you think about it but I mean like you know it's not bad. It, it's a simpler version for people to learn with and then when they're ready they can find out what the ruler actually can do. Uh, then I'll go ahead and go over this one. So this is a Gil Ahamat. Uh, this is like the boss star deck. Yeah, it's a really cool star deck. Has a uh, has some nice basic stone artwork that I don't believe has been reused at all, which it feels like a waste. At least I don't think it's been reused. I'm pretty sure the basic stones in the star deck have not been reused, but it should get reused. So, uh, hmm, I wonder which uh, booster box is the first booster box for Rhea Cluster. Yeah, it just has like a one there. So the first set that we have for Rhea Cluster is Ancient Knights. These are really interesting like way to have the booster boxes. Like we've had like nice cardboard case boxes, I guess you could say, or reusable boxes before, but uh, these like are like something else. It's like a fat pack or a, uh, I'm blanking on what they're actually called. I've, I've only known them as like fat packs and then they changed their names. Yeah, no, I'm drawing a blank. But uh, you know, those things where like you'll get like a few booster packs of like Pokemon or magic or something. But this is just straight up a booster box and it's honestly really cool. They're kind of awkward to uh, store as they are with regular booster boxes, but like, it's pretty neat. They, they uh, you know, they slide up. The second set for Rhea Cluster is Advent of the Demon King. Once again, cool box design. They just never continued it. And uh, yeah, I, part of me is like, that's really fucking cool. And then another part of me is like, it was probably a good call to go back to standard booster box design. The third set for Array Cluster is the Time Spinning Witch. This was the set that had uh, misprint rulers. They're kind of cool. Unless you're a collector, there's not much reason to buy those rulers. Still a really cool set. Like all of Array Cluster is really awesome. And then for the fourth set for Array Cluster, we have Winds of the Ominous Moon. Very cool. Very cool cluster. Cool starter decks. Not my favorite starter decks. Uh, like I said, Lapis Cluster definitely takes the cake for me, but uh, these are definitely some cool starter decks. Not the worst starter decks to learn with, yeah. After Raid Cluster, we are going into New Valhalla. See, we, we got there eventually. OG Valhalla, New Valhalla. Yeah. Alright, so I have feelings about this cluster cool cards cool mechanic cool rulers i don't like how it was executed at all so these booster boxes they don't have rulers the only way you were able to get rulers were to get the star decks yeah it's kind of dumb i didn't like that here's my thing there was backlash with moa not having rulers like that was the major complaint that i heard at my lgs was moa doesn't have any rulers you can't just buy a booster box and play with it you know that kind of thing i don't know why, why would you i don't like it so for new valhalla uh, we have five star decks. We have the light star deck is just a uh, new Valhalla entry set light. We have a uh, Brunhild and Adam. Then we have a uh, new Valhalla entry set fire. Yep. Then we have the water star deck, the wind star deck, and the darkness star deck. I guess I could have gone through this a little better. Okay, so 
Brunhild Adam, Isis Fushi, Arthur Loki, Chimimi Hanzo, Lucifer and Lich. So yeah, I I remember these uh, star decks were like, I think it was like $50 or something on release, or at least that's what I was seeing on TCG Player. I was like, $50 for a starter deck? It's really fucking expensive. And then it's like, oh, there's not gonna be starters in the booster boxes. And then it's like, well shit, these are selling out. And then it's getting like, yeah, yeah. I didn't like it. That's my first gripe aside from the initial MOA situation. Moving on from that though, the first set for New Valhalla is New Dawn Rises. Very beautiful box. Like, the, the yellow, after going through so many red boxes, and I think like, aside from TAT, the majority of these boxes have always been red. Then we hit uh, New Valhalla and we got some nice yellow. So yeah, New Dawn Rises for the first set, the Strangers of New Valhalla for the second set, and then for the third set we have Awakening of the Ancients and uh, this this next one, the fourth set for New Valhalla, is the first time I ever pre-ordered a booster box and yeah I'm pretty happy I pre-ordered it. The Decisive Battle of Valhalla. This is when things kind of changed for how Force of Will printed their boxes. It went from print to demand to print to pre-order plus a little extra so yeah this was uh Looking back, this was a smart move for Rustin back in the past. I remember where I was. I was in a vintage stock and I was like looking around for like some sleeves and stuff and just, you know, oh, what do they have here, you know? And uh, I was reminded that, hey, this is going to be a uh, print to uh, pre-order this time around. And I was like, well, I've been collecting, you know, booster boxes and stuff and like, you know, cracking packs for like draft and stuff. And I was like, oh, I should look into pre-ordering this then because I don't want to miss out on a booster box. My mindset was like, okay, whenever I have like some spending money to, you know, spend on myself, I'll just buy a few boxes here and there. Just kind of like amass a collection like casually and stuff. But uh, this was the first box that I was like, I should just look into pre-ordering if it's going to become print to pre-order. I uh, don't want to miss out on a set. So uh, this box, very, very important to me in my collection and uh i have four more back here there, there, there's one of them right there yeah so yeah new valhalla new valhalla that's a that was a great set just don't like how the star decks were i really wish they had included the rulers throughout the booster boxes even if they were just reprints or something yeah either way as someone who has been like very casual for playing Force of Will, I was bummed to see that it was going to be hard to get the rulers for this set if you didn't pick up the star decks, you know, before people started increasing the price on them and stuff and trying to flip them, yeah. That's just my thing on them. Up next, we are going into Alice Origin. Uh, what's a good way to go about this? Let's let's just go ahead and try to release order on this. Alice Origin, the first set is just Alice Origin. Yeah, this cluster, uh, has a great naming convention. Alice Origin, first boost box, Alice Origin. It released alongside two star decks, which kind of fitting, OG Alice Cluster. We had the Faria and Melgus dual decks, you could say. And the star decks that released with uh, the first box for Alice Origin is Faria and Melgus. Definitely a power increase, but themes are still there with the Regalia. This set also started doing uh, box topper rulers. So, you actually got uh, Lenith as the ruler in every single box. Cute little boxes. I got different feelings on Alice Origin uh, as far as how they handled the booster boxes. These aren't very easy to draft or have sealed games with. That's my major gripe. The second set for Alice Origin is Alice Origin 2. Yep. This released alongside a Prisia and a Valentina star deck. Very cool, very cool. The buy box ruler for this set was Machina. The third set for Alice Origin is Alice Origin 3. This one they kind of changed it up a bit, arguably for the worse. I don't know, it's, it's a weird thing. So yeah, no star decks for this one. You had a Reflect Refrain, you had Arla and Rizard as the potential buy box promos here. So I think ideally if you bought a case, well actually no, a case had eight boxes for this. Yeah, no, it's uh, the buy box ruler. It's kind of weird, it's kind of funky if you ask me. I'm happy that uh, this was kind of a short-lived thing. Yeah, this also had a side product release. It was either alongside or like after or before it. We had a Ghost in the Shell collaboration set. 
We have Star Deck, Ghost in the Shell, SAC, 2045 for the uh, Netflix series that advertised for it. And then we also have a Ghost in the Shell booster box. Not much to say about this. They kind of just like took screenshots of the show and then we had two secret rares that had some really good artwork. Yeah, a majority of this is just screenshots. It really doesn't look that great in my opinion. Basically, when I watched the uh, series on Netflix, I just had it as like a background show. It was hard to watch. There were times I did like, you know, turn my focus towards it with like an action scene or something, but like for a majority of it, I was just like, all right, just imagine it looks better, Rustin. Just imagine it looks better. And then the last set for Alice Origin is Alice Origin, f I I'm just kidding. It's actually Prologue of Autoroctia. This is a kind have a neat set if you ask me uh, some cool cards in here that uh, semi C play still this also had the buy box ruler situation uh, so you had magna you had a dark Alice and then you had a gill lapis this one's a uh, this one's a little bit draftable sort of it's weird. I tried to make it work. We tried to do a booster box versus booster box for this and it kind of worked. Kind of. Basically it came down to did you pull your ruler's regalia? Yes or no? Yeah. It's funky. Up next we have Saga Cluster and this was actually the first booster box that we opened on the channel. The Epic of the Dragon Lord. Kind of continuing on with the uh, buy a box ruler style that they did. It was only one ruler per booster box for this set. Good news is that the company uh, you know, kind of like uh, realize the mistake after the uh, community outcry that uh, that sucks. You're buying a full booster box and you're only getting one ruler. Now, complaints could also be made for Prologue of Autoroctia, but there's only three rulers in that set. The Epic of the Dragon Lord had six rulers, so unless you bought a case and you didn't hit any duplicate rulers, was not a super easy way to get these without you know going on the secondary market. And on the secondary market, they were expensive because they were buy a box rulers basically. Yeah, happy that they uh, fixed the issue in the next set. The second set for Saga Cluster is the Magic Stone War Zero. Uh, <laughs> It's a, this is a set. Uh, good news, they fixed the uh, pull rates for rulers. It is now two rulers per box here and uh, continues that way for up until today. So yeah, happy about that. Some really powerful cards here. Some uh, too powerful and made their way onto the ban list, but uh, yep. The third set for Saga Cluster is Assault into the Demonic World. If you're a new player and you don't care much about going into the uh, tournament scene or trying to be a very like competitive grinder like with your friends and stuff, if you're just playing casually, if you can pick up Assault into the Demonic World, this is actually a really fun set to hop into. I've actually made a few like demo semi-starter like decks with uh, rulers here just to like have on me to like teach new players with. and. Uh, yeah, this is a great set. Also some great staples in here. If you can find the set under like a hundred dollars or maybe like about a hundred, I think it's worth picking up. Anything more than 120, I would probably just look into some uh, singles they need to buy, but a uh, great set. Great set. Some really powerful staples. Great set. Up next is one of my favorite sets. This is the fourth set for Saga Cluster, the seventh. If you've seen any of my ban list reaction videos, some cards in here that I would love to get unbanned, and uh, yeah. Also one of my favorite cards, Inferno, Virgil, it's on the ban list, Belial's on the ban list, Dante is nerfed because Virgil's on the ban list, yeah. I can go into a rant, but uh, there's some great cards in here, there's Garion, there's, like I said, Inferno, I'm blanking on some other cards, but if you can find this at a cheap price, it might be worth picking up. My major thing for any boost boxes is that if you can possibly have some limited gameplay with it, try to get draft in, try to get some sealed in. If uh, you and a friend each buy a booster box, try to have booster box versus booster box. If you do that, try to have them be the same booster boxes. Like, don't have your friend get like a Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale booster box and you get the seventh because that's not going to be a fair fight. It's not. Power creep is a thing in all card games and a lot of games to be honest. Yeah, don't do that to your friends. Try to get like a around the same like year or cluster free booster box games. I could go into more detail about how much I really enjoyed the seventh, but uh, I'm just gonna, gonna move on. 
from that. Oh, I forgot the mini set. It's so tiny. It's so adorable. It has some great, great cards in it. Rebirth of Legend, fantastic little set. So each of these booster boxes for a Rebirth of Legend, you can get one of the Epic of the Dragon Lord rulers in these booster boxes. It's a really cool way to reprint them. It's like a slightly different printing. I believe it's like full art on both sides. So that's really cool. Aside from that, it has some really great staple cards. Fun little cute set. Also just tiny little box. Reminds me a little of the uh, OG Valhalla booster boxes. On to the next club. Cluster, dual cluster. We have the Tails deck and the Villains deck that are released alongside the first set for this cluster, Game of Gods. This introduced a new way to judgment. Uh, it's called Order. It's not exactly judgment, but it's like similar to it enough that it would call it a judgment ish mechanic. Up next we have Game of Gods Reloaded. Do you feel like there's a Matrix reference? Just you wait. The third set for dual cluster is Game of Gods Revolution. Yeah, much like, uh, you know, the Matrix movies, uh, they should have stopped, uh, you know, after the third one. Luckily, uh, Force of Will stopped. This was a change in, um, uh, the company's, like, vision, I guess you could say. So basically, this was when New Frontiers was kind of, like, getting put on, like, the back burner. New Frontiers is now viewed as, like, a fan format now. And Wanderer, the eternal format that, you know, I talked about at the beginning of the video, that's now now the main thing and they were like clusters aren't always going to be four sets sometimes they'll be three sometimes they'll be two they might do four but like basically they want clusters to be like story beats now so they just had three sets for this and then they moved on to the next set which as of the recording of this video is the current cluster so on to the most recent cluster, and as of the recording of this, the third set has not released yet. When this gets uploaded, the third set will probably be out, but yeah. The last cluster we have to show here today is Hero Cluster, and it released along with two star decks, the Aristella and the Osaka star deck. I did say that I love Lapis Cluster star decks. I adore these star decks. As someone who is a collector along with being a player, these are very, very easy to store. My only thing that I would want slightly different is for the boxes to be a little wider and maybe like a little taller. And the reason why is that if you have something like this, but you also have space for players to sleeve the cards and then put them back in boxes, that is a beautiful thing. If anyone with iSpy or has ties to iSpy is watching, that's a free idea right there. There. Magic does it, I think Pokemon does it, for at least some of their stuff, but yeah, just a little wider and a little taller, just a little bit taller. That'd be just wonderful, just to, mm, just think about it, think about it, think about it. Tournament-wise, it's already encouraged to have your card sleeved, I think it might actually be like a rule to have your card sleeved, so to be able to have star decks with room for sleeves, that would be just a great way to go about it. So yeah, Aristella, Asuka, Star Decks. Now, they are remedying the problem here. A new world emerges. This set in Hero Cluster came out with another new judgment adjacent mechanic called contracting. So basically, you have a chant in your deck called a contract, and with that contract, whenever you meet certain conditions, you can turn that contract into a J ruler. Typically, a uh, ruler in particular will have their own contract. For Asuka, it is Night of the Legendary Vampire, and then she turns into End of Night. So, I don't know who decided it, but uh, they decide that, uh, you know, good, good news. Uh, two rulers per box. That's great. How many contracts did they have per box? Did you say four? Six? You know, like a healthy number that, you know, should ensure that anyone who buys a case will be able to get a playset, maybe a little bit more of each contract? Uh, no, it was uh, two contracts per booster box. Yeah, so you buy a case, you're, you're not getting a playset of contracts, I'm just telling you that right now. I'll go ahead and say it now, they uh, did listen to community feedback, they did understand that players, if there is a card that uh, we can have a playset of in our deck, we're gonna want a playset of, and there's, you know, plenty of feedback going to uh, the company, thanks to people that are like with closer ties to the company and the newest set that's gonna be coming out soon and will probably be out before this video is actually uploaded they do 
fix the problem. They do fix the problem. I'll go ahead and say it now. Along with there being a buy a box promo for the booster boxes for War of the Suns, there's also going to be a packet of contracts, non-foil but still a packet of contracts, minus the Aristella and Asuka contracts. So that's great. That is awesome. That is listening to the player feedback. That's really good PR going on right there because uh, yeah, there's there's some heat from the player base of uh, just super upset about not being able to optimize their deck without dropping like $200 just to get a play set of a very necessary card. So it's definitely a good move. Enough about that though. The second set for Hero Cluster is the Underworld of Secrets. It has the same problem as a new world emerges with the contracts. Whatever the community feedback was gained back to the company, uh, we assumed that they had already like gotten printing going on for the next set. I don't, I don't know like what the deadlines to meet for getting stuff printed was, but obviously it was too late for the feedback to actually reach them before printing had already started. It was definitely a concern of, of ours. It was shortly after this release we found out that they had already like started working on remedying it. With the War of the Suns uh, set, which will be the third set for Hero Cluster, there will be that packet like I mentioned. So that was a really good move on the company and really helps show that they care about the community more than just making money. Like obviously it's a company, they're gonna try and make money as much as they can, like, you know. But uh, shows that they're not as greedy as some other companies can be. Very happy about that, so yeah. So that is all of the main sets that I have to uh, show off. I do have three more things I want to show off before we end this video. So, I Spy, or someone who has ties to I Spy, hear me out. There was a product called Magic Stone Lab. If uh, you're a player and you buy this, you're dumb. Ignore that one and that one. Ignore it, ignore it. Uh, <laughs> These are just basic stones, and yeah, if you're a regular player, you have more basic stones than you could ever need just from playing for like a few sets, maybe a cluster. Yeah, you don't need basic stones, but hear me out. Magic Stone Lab 2 Electric Boogaloo. All of the special stones from the beginning of the game till now. Just all the special stones in one product. You can make them non-foil, like these are non-foil. The reason why I wanted to get this was that it had artwork for all the basics, pretty much, except for the waifu stones, we won't go into that. But uh, great opportunity there. You've already like shown that you're willing to reprint some uh, very major cards, like, you know, Magic Stone Lab 2. Come on, it's a great idea, great idea. For this uh, next product, let me actually pull up the name of it. So, this right here, I'm pretty sure like, even some fairly regular players haven't seen this before. This is the 2016 Prisia Matsuri set. This is unopened. There is a little bit of like tearing on the plastic just because it's very poorly sealed plastic, but unopened. This uh, playmat I looked on eBay, it goes for like $200. This ruler goes for like $200. Uh, yeah, that is pricey. Uh, and that also has like a nice acrylic case. I haven't seen the acrylic case. If I see that, it goes for a some price I might get it and then like put a cube in here because this thing is very nice Let's see if I can get like a closer shot I might take some pictures or something of this if I don't like how this looks on video but yeah there's a deck box like a forcible deck box there I already have like this deck box like out it's it's you know it's kind of neat it's not super amazing but yeah you can see that play mat there very cool comes with uh what is that five booster packs for uh battle uh Rotaractia. comes with uh there's a demo deck right here for uh peter pan and uh captain hook uh there's the uh, prissia ruler the uh, matsuri uh very cool yeah it's uh, prissia the commander of the sacred beasts very cute and uh here's prissia beast lady i don't know if you can see it in there yeah very cute. And then uh, there's uh, some promos right here on the side. Yeah, you can kind of see in there. But yeah, now this was a, uh, I remember uh, this was like, okay, like I mentioned before, I usually would like, you know, just buy forcible product like every now and then and stuff. And uh, this was one of the things where like, I think I was at work or something. I was just Googling like forcible stuff and uh, this popped up and I was like, that looks fake. And I look at it closer, I'm like, oh shit, I've never seen this before. And uh, I picked one up. I'm very happy I did when I did because a few months later I looked at it again and it was uh, I think it was sold out. 
Ah, uh, yep, very happy I got what I did. This is a very cool product, but a, another product that is really cool, the Ruler Collection set. This was a product that I, uh, really happy they did this. Really happy they did this. There was several members of the community that were like, I really want to play a particular ruler, but I don't want to drop a bunch of money because, you know, there's only like one, you know, listing on TCG Player and it's like $80 or something like that or $100. And to be able to get this, which was, I think, like the highest I saw it for pre-orders was like 240 or something or 220 and it's like 142 cards so that is less than two dollars per ruler it doesn't include the vin golf rulers i think it includes vlad i actually haven't opened this up yet i've been catching up on videos and i don't want to like open a bunch of product and then be like okay now i just need to edit all those videos i kind of want to like you know paste it and stuff but uh this was a fantastic set yeah it's 10th anniversary they all have like a little promo stamp saying 10th anniversary and uh yeah, this was a fantastic little way to do a 10th anniversary. It's really cool. It's really cool. If uh, you manage to see one, I would say under $200, definitely pick it up. The most I would spend is $220, but uh, yeah, this is great. If, you know, you and a friend, like, you want to get a particular ruler, but you don't want to, like, shill out uh, the money on it, you know, you could go, like, halves and halves, maybe, like, sell or trade the ones that you don't want. It's a great set. Definitely think about picking it up, if you can. Force of Will is easily the one game that I've invested the most into, and there is a good reason beyond the financial value of any of these sets. It's a fun game that has similar mechanics to other games, but in my opinion, do them better, along with their own mechanics that just add on to the enjoyment. The artwork is beautiful, the lore is neat, and the community, while it might not be as big as others, is welcoming and kind as long as you are the same. I've been Rustin, and if you enjoy Force of Will content, feel free to check out more of my videos. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.